Hi, man, Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Dom Ramsey sent this in. It's an eye zettle, and it appears to be some sort of bank device because you can see there's a card reader in there. It's a bit like a, a regular magnetic one, not too dissimilar than what you'd find in your Nintendo Famicom disk drive system. OLED screen clearly and a nice little pad so this is cute I'm wondering if this is a point of sale system so it's designed for if you're a shop or something like that and you want to charge a customer something you'd have an app to use this so I think I'm going to have a quick go at powering it on I don't know if you mentioned if it was totally dead or not but we'll try powering it on and uh, we'll dismantle it and look on the bottom looks like a just a regular card reader as well neat I Zettel please wait and this is hooked up to my bench power supply, so I can tell that it's drawing 0 0.088 amps at 5.02 volts. Now I wonder if it will just say please wait forever, if it'll actually do something. Oh dear, it's very unhappy. It says system tampered, and I'm guessing it would have an internal battery that if the internal battery dies... Um, this would happen or if you open it while well, that internal battery is activated and monitoring the systems once you've cracked the lid it's going to be unhappy about it interestingly enough though if you look here it's actually I think an older technology OLED display because there is a slight burn in I can actually see some writing just inside that smiley face that's something you don't see that often these days a bit of a uh, bit of a boost there maybe it uh, did have battery power left doesn't matter it's still on I'm going to figure out how would you get into it if you were going to do some serious system tampering. They're clearly not going to make it so that it's easy to get into, that's for sure. Ah, however, our KTEC tool seems to have done the job. I might get more of these made up, actually, because I'm always losing this one, and they're always useful. So let me see if I can find a supplier for some of these. Maybe we'll do some back office giveaways. Now you can see I'm not really taking any care because I'm not too bothered about damaging it. And that's a button. Let's get that button out. Oops. Oh, oh, he's been a bit violent. That is uncharacteristic for me, I know. I'm just working my way around. So I don't want to damage any of the stuff that we want to look at. I think we're good. Just got to crack this side open. And there do seem to be some sort of charging prongs. So these things here on the side are, are part of some sort of charger. I'm just going to give it a bit of a force now. That's it. So you've got the two what I assume to be charging prongs and everything else. So let's put that aside. Now you can clearly see that magnetic stripe reading assembly, which is the yeah, same as a tape head. Should be able to pull that apart. Let's get the old screwdrivers in there. But fascinating enough... Look at this thing at the bottom, which looks like the card reader, but if you look closely, it's covered with this very fine ribbon cable that's got loads of lines everywhere, and I suspect it's either some sort of shielding, or it's a protection system that if you damage this enclosure, it'll detect that you've tampered with it. It's probably to stop you inserting your own card reader in there. It's interesting. We'll know more once we dig in. But looking at the top, I don't see any physical buttons that would have been mashed so you could probably have gone so far as to take the lid off there's always the possibility they could have had a light sensitive component in there that would trigger when you take the lid off but i'm not seeing it just yet okay so that is the ribbon holding that leader look at that so you've actually got three heads on it That's why it's got such a complicated ribbon rather than just two wires. So there should be a few sets of contacts on that. We'll go a bit further. That looks to be the battery soldered in. Let's see if we can remove any of it. There are some nice micro switches on here. So there's some salvageable components, also a USB micro. Let's get the screw out. Just turning to see if there's anything interesting written on the battery. Not really. So we're not going to be able to get this out without cutting the battery. 
And to do that, we're going to need some very thin side cutters. Let's get in there. To one side. <laughs> Got a bit of a spark there. We shorted the battery on something. So this is where the anti-tamper starts coming in there, once you start getting to this part of the assembly. I mean, I'm sure even just disconnecting the battery would have been enough. Okay. And there is a lithium um, button cell there, which would be used for storing the data. Potentially you could have changed that. Or I guess it's just a totally separate circuit, so when the main battery runs out of power, this is enough to keep the, the memory juiced up. Now we do appear to have a small sub-module there, which I can't quite tell if this ribbon's connected to it or not, so I think we're going to have to keep going a bit further. It'd be nice to get this battery out of the way though, so that way we can completely free up the assembly. Now let's be a bit careful with this, although it does seem to be in a metal can. Yeah, not seen that before. That seems like quite, a, quite the protected battery. It's a very nice construction, very hardy construction actually. Unfortunately that didn't free up this head assembly, so boo to that. Let's see if we can pull anything else out. Nice. So there's your keypad assembly and it's nicely held together so it won't just drop all over the place. That's very cute actually. In fact this whole thing's quite cute, this assembly, because if you have a standard OLED you have a little interface here, battery. This is a groovy thing. You could make a little console out of that. And there is the screen itself. Ah, look at that. That's a really interesting membrane. I've not actually seen them like that before. Very cute. In fact, I'm going to get the old soldering iron on because I think we need to go in a bit deeper. So that's the reader right there. And let's count the pins, see if we can work out how many heads it is. Looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pins. Mm -hmm. Which is, of course, more pins than you would expect. Still, let's whip this out. The screen can come out. You can see the markings here. This could be a standard screen. I'm going to leave it on there for anybody who's interested in playing along at home. Of course, though, you would have to mount this ribbon yourself onto your design, which is always a bit of a pain. But yeah, nice little OLED screen. Not too dissimilar than the type you can pick up that are using Spy or ISED C. The thing I am really interested in, of course, is there's a module there. That module looks fascinating. So we'll get to that. But also we need to figure out what this crazy card reading section is doing. So we're going to get into there too. Shall we have a look to see what these components are first? Just going to try to clean these up a bit. That's a big old CPU. Looks like it says MC1MX258CJM4A. And usually with those, you couple up with a bit of DRAM or something. And this is the module that we're kind of fascinated with. And it does say BCW2046. I'm wondering if this is some sort of Bluetooth module, but we're going to lift that. In fact, let's lift it now because it's just bugging me. I want, I want to see what we can do with it. All right, we're going to have to get in because it's soldered through these half wires. Which is going to be a bit of a pain. We're just going to flood it with solder if we can. It does have some pretty strange markings on it. I'm wondering if it was... Well, there's an LED on it, clearly. I suspect it's a communications board. I cut it off. Oh, we ripped off one of the pads, unfortunately. Toasty. 
no indication on this board itself what those connections are. 26 megahertz crystal. Almost positive this is going to be a comms module. Although, looking at it, I'm not seeing an antenna. In fact, I am seeing an antenna. It's right there on the edge of the board. Look at that little antenna. Bluetooth. I'm certain. I'm certain of it. Fortunately, yeah, no, no indication on the main PCB. Um, my guess would be it's either... Oh, it could be USB, you know. That's a real shame that's damaged because we could have tried plugging that into a USB device. In fact, let's see the sizing. Oh, it's almost certainly going to have been USB. Dang, nabbit! Who knows? Maybe we can recreate that pad. Life's too short, though, eh? When you've got Bluetooth modules literally on the internet and they'll be like a pound each, it's crazy now. And when I say modules, I'm talking about the actual just whole USB things. So, let's investigate this. I like this keypad thing. That's really quite interesting how it's done. It's got like four little solder blobs in the corners. Let's see. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. That is amazing. I have not seen that before. That makes so much sense, though. I was trying to figure out with this. It didn't have any edge connector on it or any ribbon. So clearly when you're pressing on this, wow, all the contact is being made here. And it's touching that. So that pattern on it and the four blobs in the corner, again, are shielding. This thing is shielded on top of shielding on top of shielding. I think this is the key feature of this is that it's clearly designed not to like give out any emission and that will be why that battery has a metal can on it which is covering all those components too the only thing getting in and out of this was fire its bluetooth so it's a miura systems miura systems and it looks like it would have had a usb potential for this side too so possibly some sort of uh, programming header. In fact, it's more pins than the USB. It's just obviously a, stand, a header there. Now I'm looking on this side because I want to see what's going on with this because I can definitely see through here that there's a mechanism here. This thing is, is like a transformer. It's more than meets the eye. So I might have to just get levering. Yes. It's just lifting, it's lifting a whole layer of PCB with it. It doesn't really want to come off. In fact, there is stuff under it too. So it's clearly glued. And it's trying to lift that substrate of PCB with it. So we're going to have to try to get really underneath it. But it will, of course, be connected to that PCB somewhere. Yes, it was connected to the PCB. And we've just completely yoinked off where it was connected. Oh my gosh, it's fitted into a milled out rebate. Now that is something I've never seen on a board. I mean, it's something you can clearly do and ask for. Holy smokes. Right. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, a lot to take in. This thing was its own assembly almost. So the first thing is, you can see there that the PCB is actually milled. It's got a, at least one millimeter mill in there. So this module can actually sit down into it. So this that's exactly what was happening here. This module was sit down. And you can see that the module itself here has some footprint. So that's what we've ripped off the board. Here, 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 here. And that's actually the substrate of the PCB coming with it. And there was clearly here uh, a switch or sensor of some description. You can see that there on the board. And you can see it's mating half here. I suspect that's something to do with registering a push of a card. So if we get something that thin that we can push up there, we could have tried to emulate what was happening. But you can see there, these are the contacts for that uh, like SIM card, that SIM region that you have on your credit card. So that would have mated up entirely in there and really just made the data. I'm pretty sure that, that chip Sorry, that switch there is just a detect switch to detect when it's home. Although, let's see if we can pull it apart. Yeah, let's see if we can assemble it. Obviously, we took it apart here. That's the little contact membrane that goes on top. There could have been other parts of this left. And you can see there, that's the mechanism that moves up and down when you'd insert a card. But this whole thing is covered in a ribbon 
ground plane. So look, if we pull that off, it's like an RF shield, basically. That is crazy. A ribbon-based RF shield, but it has some hardening elements. It has some slight thin layers of PCB-type material to give that strength. Now they've gone over there, so you are not picking up any of the radiation from this thing. It's definitely a hardened piece of equipment here. It's quite impressive. I know we've pulled apart bank things before, but this is made to another level. This is a genuine thing because you want to give trust to your customers who are, you know, you're using this for, putting their bank cards in and everything. Yeah, it's quite simple. So there you go. The card comes in, pushes this switch down right there. Now I'll zoom in a little bit, and you can see while that's happening. Your card's obviously sliding in, and these pins, it's hard to see, there's a little chamfer there. This little tray is moving back and forth, and as it moves back, right to the back, you can just about see it, those pins go up and make nice contact. So that means this thing isn't wearing out all the time. I mean, this is literally waiting for the card to go in, and then bang, pins are engaged. It's something that's designed to take thousands and thousands of cycles before it starts wearing out the material in those contacts. That's pretty cute. And there, of course, is your 3V uh, lithium cell, which we can cut out. Let's measure that, actually. I think there's quite a large possibility that this thing would have been dead, hence the issue with the tampering. I mean, we didn't see anywhere on this at all an anti-tamper uh, that was obvious, like a spring that just goes to the outside casing. I suspect it would have just run out of juice. And then when you uh, powered it up the next time, it would say no. And we're seeing half a volt there. So clearly that's gone kaput. Half a volt. And is there anything else interesting here? Well, normally I would say if you don't have a box of bits, these things could be useful to keep because you do have some clocks there. You have another 24 megahertz clock. You have some random inductors. Now, Asnavor on Discord, of course, was looking for inductors. This is the sort of board that you could get them off because, of course, it is USB. And there are USB spec inductors here. A few ceramic caps, uh, a couple of uh, resistor networks, a couple of transistors. I mean, yeah, it's probably OK. I mean, just sling it in the drawer doesn't take up much space. You could always bend these over. Now, this thing at the bottom, it's an NXP. I'll read it out to you. Uh, an NXP 802HL07 uh, with its own 20 megahertz crystal. So it's got its own little subsystem, I suspect, for dealing with the cards. And it would probably just send a serialized data to the main guy over there. Looking on the back, communication, though, between this board and that board, you can see, can't occur any at all on this layer because of this milled section, right? There's no communication getting through, so everything has to be on the back. And you can see it's all just coming up through very few connections here. So this uh, this chip here is obviously reading the card, handling all of that, maybe sending out a serialized data up to the main MCU, who's doing all of the transactional stuff. Uh, yeah, a bit of a shame about this. It would have been nice to try shoving that in a PC to see the old Bluetooth thing. Uh, 26 megahertz crystal. Yeah, you better say to a penny these days it all goes into the box of scraps <laughs> let's check the battery out last thing before i sign off let's see what this battery would have any juice in it at all three three oh there we go 3.85 so it's probably salvageable to be honest with you i'll leave that on the shelf of despair just in case i have the urge to try charging that up at some point in the future so Hopefully uh, that's been some use to you. I'm going to probably do a video on the ZX Spectrum uh, again. <laughs> I know you're getting bored of those, but I did pick up another piece of random hardware for it. And if I can figure out how to write a tape uh, from the PC that actually works, we'll get to check it out. Thanks uh, again to uh, Dom Ramsey for sending this in. Much appreciated. Hit him up on Twitter at Dom Ramsey. Thanks for watching.